Back in the day, the Game Boy was an awesome little machine that could go with you anywhere and play some awesome games. Some new franchises started here and some got sequels or ports to this console that some may find better or worse. But what you could always say about the Game Boy is that the games were fun. However, that screen was small, the battery life was short, and sometimes the game just deserves to be played on a bigger screen. But in a world of emulation where you can just emulate the Game Boy or Game Boy Color, do you really need something like the Super Game Boy? How do you even emulate a Super Game Boy? Well, personally, I think you do need a Super Game Boy because sometimes it can add some quirky and unique specials to a game that you can get elsewhere. Sure, we can recreate it with retro arc overlays and we can change palettes on certain emulators, but there is something very unique about the Super Game Boy itself. There's something to be said for taking your on-the-go experience and putting it on the big screen for you to enjoy. Hi, my name is Brad, and today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to get the Super Game Boy up and running through RetroArch. So first, over in LaunchBox, if you already have your Game Boy games uh, imported into LaunchBox for RetroArch or MGBA or whatever emulator you are using, leave them alone we're going to re-add your game boy games so you can see here i've created a platform called the super game boy parentheses gb now i'm only going to run through adding the game boy games but the game boy color games also work on the super game boy at least some of them do uh, some of the games may have some added functionality but i did do a test of running some game boy color games through the super game boy and it actually didn't add anything. It, it just made the game actually grayscale or, or the uh, the odd Super Game Boy color that you, you'll I'll show off in a second. Some games will utilize a higher palette um, or, you know, sound effects. But the Super Game Boy is actually just a Game Boy. The cartridge was cheaper than buying a Game Boy because they didn't have to do buttons or a screen or battery compartments. It's just the actual innards of a Game Boy. So if you didn't, if you wanted to play the games, but didn't actually have a Game Boy or was too expensive, even though it was fairly cheap, you, you bought one of these. The Super Game Boy can do its special thing to some Game Boy Color games, but you may find uh, the default Game Boy Color color palette and using uh, RetroArch overlays to be preferred in this case which i do so uh i did have a game boy color custom platform but I, I just kept it to game boy so do keep that in mind game some game boy color games can work in a uh, super game boy but it'll just be running it in kind of a, a legacy mode some game boy color games had the ability to uh also run in grayscale like you were playing it on a regular game boy uh, so the super game boy just treats it like that so let's go to tools, import, ROM files. So you're going to navigate to where you have your Game Boy games. In the top right search, we're going to put asterisk.gb. It's going to filter for all the files ending in a .gb file extension. We're going to click on a game, control A to highlight them all, open. Then we're going to click next. The platform for imported ROMs, you can name it whatever you want. But I went ahead and named it Super Game Boy, parentheses, GB, and parentheses. Once you have a non-default platform name typed in, Scrape As should pop up here below. In the drop-down, make sure that you select the Nintendo Game Boy. So we have our custom platform, but it's going to treat it to Scrape As a Nintendo Game Boy. So that way you can get all the beautiful artwork from the LaunchBox Games database and Emo Movies, and the videos and music from Emo Movies as well. Then next... The default emulator uh, it probably isn't going to pop up with RetroArch, so go ahead and select RetroArch from the drop-down list if you've already added it in the past. And since this is something that I've I've taught previously, you might have RetroArch as an emulator. So go ahead and select it or click Add. Once you have the name RetroArch inputted here and you have your RetroArch.exe selected, go to the Associated Platforms tab. Okay, so I've edited a little bit so that you can see the default command line parameters a little better. 
for the most part, you really only need the dash L command, which is the command to load a core. However, if you scroll away to the bottom and double click an empty space, add the platform that you've previously added. So we named it earlier, Super Game Boy GB in parentheses. So make sure you name it here exactly the same way that you named it about two or three screens back. This is where it gets a little bit more confusing than usual, but it's still relatively the same concept. So I'm using the Super Game Boy 2 cart. Uh, you can use just regular Super Game Boy, but I prefer the Super Game Boy 2. It fixed a couple of things. The original Super Game Boy cart was actually overclocked slightly. So sometimes uh, sound effects would be off. Now emulators may fix this issue, uh, but I don't know if they have some and if, and if they do some may have some may not have So I just went with the Super Game Boy 2 because the hardware inside more accurately Lines up with a regular Game Boy, but Super Game Boy 2 is the most complete package. So I went with that So you may be able to use a relative path, but just for safety I went with an absolute path so double click in the default command line parameter section and do uh, quotations and then your drive letter and then type in your path all the way to your Super Game Boy cart, including the file extension here on the end. So this ends in .sfc and then the end parentheses. After that, we use the dash L command like before and we point it to beast nest balanced you can pick beast nest accuracy if you would like but remember that that actually requires a roughly three gigahertz ish cpu um, i don't have a time frame uh, for like what type of cpus because uh you know a three gigahertz cpu from 10 years ago is not the same as a three gigahertz cpu from now but uh as long as you have a three gigahertz CPU, uh, accuracy will work. Otherwise, balanced works perfectly well. <clears throat> I have a decent computer, but I choose balanced for recording purposes. So do keep that in mind. Uh, so add your core line here, like regular. And again, this is a relative pathing and not an absolute path. You can add an absolute path if you would like, but I know for a fact that uh, relative works here because every other line has this after that you're going to add a space oh and there does need to be a space between the quotation after the absolute path pointing to the super game boy 2 cartridge space then the dash l and then space again then we start that line or then we start that command rather and then we do space and then we're going to put two dashes and then you're going to type in subsystem with a space SGB. This is gonna tell RetroArch to use the Super Game Boy instruction set. And then afterwards here, this is the dash C command to load a custom config. Now, all I did was go into my RetroArch folder. I went into the config folder. I already have a BeastNest balanced config. So I copied that, pasted it in the same directory. And then I renamed this to beastnest underscore balanced underscore sgb2.cfg. So in the command line here, the dash c command and then config and the beastnest balance sgb2.config. Only add the custom config line if you actually have a custom config to load. You can just load your regular beastnest balanced or beastnest accuracy config if you have one. But do keep that in mind that this actually needs to be pointing towards a real config file because if it's not, it will crash. So if you don't have a config file, just make sure that your default command line parameter ends at subsystem SGB. Once you have that all set, go ahead and click OK. RetroArch should be selected here in the drop down. Go ahead and click Next. Use the files in their current location. Next. Uh, leave everything checked or unless you don't want to search for certain things uncheck what you don't want But I just leave it as default. I want everything that I can possibly download Then next again if you don't have an emu movies account It will prompt you to log in if you don't have one go create one log in 
If you have LaunchBox Premium and Emu Movies Premium, your video options will be down below. Otherwise, all your image and music options should be here. Leave it at default or select what you want or what you don't want. Then next, next. Once this list appears, you can go ahead and double click a game's name to rename it if you'd need to, or click on an option and hit the delete button on your keyboard to delete the game from this list and it won't import it during this import process. Once you've done all that you needed, go ahead and click finish. In your RetroArch system folder where all your BIOS go, make sure that you have the Super Game Boy BIOS, the sgb.boot.rom file, and it needs to be named exactly like this. If it's named something different, this will not work, so do keep that in mind. It needs to be named sgb.boot.rom, and if you actually need the BIOS file, Google is your best friend. Once you have that set up, go ahead and right click a game to open RetroArch. Now, if you already have the SNES up and running uh, through RetroArch, which I have a tutorial on previously uh, on the channel. So if you do want to set up SNES, you can also go ahead and watch that tutorial. It'll also go through some more of the basics of RetroArch and LaunchBox for you. So if you are rather new to this, I would suggest watching that first technically, but if you don't have a Super Nintendo set up, uh, just make sure you go down to the online updater, press X on your keyboard, the core updater, press X again, it will load the cores uh, online updater. Head on down to the Super Nintendo section where it says Bean SNES accuracy, go ahead and press X, it will download and extract that uh, core, and then B SNES balance, it will go ahead and download and extract that as well. You are more than welcome to use other SNES cores if you would like. However, Beastness Balanced and Accuracy, I know for a fact, has perfect compatibility with every SNES game. I'm not 100% sure how it is for Super Game Boy, but since Super Game Boy is just a, is essentially a Super Nintendo game, but it's a Game Boy hardware, I assume that it should be totally fine. Uh, but I don't know. Some of these cores may actually be better for Super Game Boy, uh, as far as I can tell, though. BSNES Balanced, BSNES Accuracy works fantastically. Once everything is up and running, go ahead and double click on a game. We'll go ahead and load up and you'll see the Super Game Boy uh, splash screen. So Tetris here is uh, technically not enhanced, but it does have a special palette. So I guess you can kind of consider that an enhancement, but it doesn't have a special border or sound effects. It's considered you know, enhanced if every aspect of the game is enhanced. It can add uh, audio channels to the game so that it sounds more in depth or completely replace the audio. Uh, special borders can be uh, accessed. And then of course you can see here the um, special color palette. So, you can change the color palette for your games and you can actually do some interesting things. So if a game doesn't uh, natively support the enhancement functions, you can change the color palette to something more desirable. So for me, I, I don't care for this brown going on. So press L and R on your controller or the buttons that you have selected and you can go ahead and change some things around. So we can change the palette to something more pleasing. Or more terrifying, I guess, depending depending on what you like or don't like. Like, dear lord! So, none of these are, are terribly good. The default, in this case, is probably the best. But you get the point. You can even change the border to something in the default list. Not anything that the Game Boy... Uh, nothing that the enhancement does. This is just on the Super Game Boy, these are some default borders that you can choose from. They're, you know, nothing special. Every game could technically use these borders, but you can find something more appropriate than the default. You can actually change the control scheme a little bit, if you want. You can customize the palette to something that you want very specifically. Yeah, I don't know how that works. Don't ask. And you can draw on the border if you uh, are artistic and want to create your own 
custom borders. I don't know how you would go about saving them. I don't think you can actually save them, but uh, you get the kind of idea here. Let's test a game that is super Game Boy enhanced, at least with color palette and uh, border. As far as I can tell, the music in Tetris Plus has not changed, but I could be wrong. It could be enhanced because of the Super Game Boy. I just don't know. I, I haven't actually uh, played Tetris Plus regularly. I guess I could just boot it up normally and find out, right? But there you go. You get the special color palette and you get the border on the sides here. There is one thing to note that I have found interesting. Let's just say interesting. If you click out of RetroArch, so I clicked on my other screen, and then you click back to the uh, RetroArch window, you can hear the, the music's not playing, the game's not moving. The game is, for all intents and purposes, frozen. Now, sometimes I've clicked away and clicked back and it continued playing. Most of the time, I would say 95% of the time, I click away and click back, it's not working at all. So at first I thought I had to reset it and then just not click out of the window or find a, an option in RetroArch so that when you click out of the window, uh, it keeps playing in the background. But if I recall, I changed that option so that it could keep playing in the background and it still froze. But I found out something interesting. If you press F1 to open this RetroArch menu and press F1 again, the game keeps playing. So I don't know why that happens, but it does happen. So if you click away and click back, just press your uh, RetroArch menu button. The default key on your keyboard is F1. And then it's continuing on like nothing happened. And then a website that I will have in the description below is a link to the Wikipedia page that has every Super Game Boy here. So you can do, so you can see Game Boy games will run or Game Boy Color games rather will run on the Super Game Boy, but for the most part, uh, there's really no need to run it through the Super Game Boy because you're gonna lose some color. However, if you look here, Pocket Puyo Sun and Pocket Puyo 2 are Game Boy Color games, but at least Pocket Puyo Sun is a Game Boy Color game. But uh, running through Super Game Boy, you get a two-player mode. So instead of needing two Game Boy Colors and a link cable, you could just pop the cartridge in, have two controllers, and play with your friend. So the only thing for Pokemon Silver and Gold, for example, I would assume is some borders. For Power Quest, Game Boy Color, multiple borders, and Super Game Boy, two-player mode. So there you go. That is how you add your Game Boy games as a custom platform into LaunchBox for the Super Game Boy or Super Game Boy 2. The slightly more uh, convoluted and complex default command line parameter options and some of the interesting things that you can do with these Super Game Boy enhancements or the default Super Game Boy options for changing borders and palettes. My name is Brad. If you liked this tutorial and it helped you get something out of RetroArch and LaunchBox that you didn't know was possible or helped you figure out something a little bit more confusing, then please click the thumbs up button right below this video. If you want to get notified for future videos and this video helped you out a lot, please also click the subscribe button as well. It helps us out a lot. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this tutorial, about anything related to LaunchBox, or you need help with anything related to anything in this video or the software, please leave your comment in the comment section below. Jason and myself are more than happy to answer any questions you may have on anything you saw here. I do lots of gaming content on my channel, uh, lots of let's plays and streams and reviews and that sort of thing. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, the link to my channel is in the description below. I would also greatly appreciate it. Remember, Freaks and Geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.